Hi, I'm Dana Murchison and I'm the staff scientist in the Body Zone here at Science North. What is your heart used for? To pump blood through your body. Um, your heart circulates your blood throughout your body. My heart's used for pumping blood around my body. Blood around your body, that's yes. wonderful. Yeah. Okay. No, what, what is your heart good for? Circulation. Circulation of what? Blood. Oh, and okay. Oxygen, I guess. And oxygen, excellent. Uh, to pump your blood. To pump your blood. For love. For love. Mostly for love. <laughs> yes, I mean, that's what we hear about, right? It's all about, it's deep in my heart. It's all about love. I'm sure it does other things, but you know, it's mostly love. Mostly love. I love hear it sustains us, right? Yes, I, I, I also hear that it pumps bodily fluids and blood through your body, but mostly love. <laughs> okay, and how many chambers does your heart have? Four. Four, look at this. Four? Four, ding, ding, ding. Oh, I know that there's four. Four. There are four, I okay. knew that. And why do you think that your heart starts to pound when you're in love? Mm, well, that happens to me also. And I guess it's because I'm feeling all of these emotions that just rush through my body and it's my heart that feels it. Is there a message that you want to send to a special someone? I love my wife. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. And how do you feel about Valentine's Day? I love Valentine's Day, although it does create some anxiety sometimes because I never know what to do. What 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 new thing am I going to do? So we're actually going out for dinner this year. Sounds wonderful. Well, I hope you eat a heart healthy meal. Thanks. Okay. Take care. Bye. <laughs> so I'm here with Jimmy the Skeleton, our body zone mascot. So uh, tell me, Jimmy, have you ever had a broken heart? Ooh, touchy subject. In honor of Valentine's Day, we thought that today we would talk about the science of the heart. The heart is, of course, that organ that's so important when you're in love, but it's important for a lot of other things as well. And the primary function of the heart is actually to pump your blood around your body. So it brings important things out to all your muscles and tissues, um, things like oxygen and nutrients, and it takes all the wastes away from your cells and tissues and gets rid of them. So those are things like um, byproducts of metabolism and also carbon dioxide, which you breathe out. So today what we're gonna do, we're gonna talk a little bit about how the heart works. I'm gonna show you how blood flows through the heart and how it works like a pump. And we're gonna learn about why people thought that it was so important for love. So, to show you where the heart is located in the body, uh, we have our friend right here. The heart is located in your chest, between your two lungs. It's very carefully nestled in there. Um, and in real life, it's surrounded by kind of a bag, which is called the pericardium. And the pericardium keeps your heart in place, prevents it from jostling too much and getting hurt. Because everybody hates a heartbreak, right? So anyway, here is your heart. Um, it's, uh, it's about this size. It's a little bit bigger than your fist, if you make a fist. And when you look inside, you can see what it is about the heart that makes it such an incredible machine. It's like a little pump. It has four different chambers, and the chambers pump your blood around your body. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna be talking a little bit more about the heart, and in order to do that, I have actually brought in a real heart to show you. This is not a human heart. Uh, those are very, very difficult to come by and not a very good idea to use. Um, actually, what this is, is a pig heart. Um, the pig heart is very similar to a human heart, um, but they're a lot easier to use. Uh, no pigs died so that we could do this. Uh, the hearts come from um, places where pigs are killed for meat, so they're kind of byproducts. So you're using up the parts of the animal that aren't normally used. So here's the heart. Um, it's a little bit bigger than a human heart would be, um, but it's actually very, very similar in terms of its shape and the way that it works. Um, so as you can see, the shape is actually sort of similar to the kinds of cartoon hearts that you might draw on your notebooks at school, for example. Um, it has a point at the bottom, and at the top it comes up into this kind of rounded, bulgy shape. 
The bulgy shape at the top is all of these different blood vessels that come off of the heart and that transport the blood into and out of the heart. So you can kind of see them at the back as well. There's an awful lot of them. They all do different things. Um, and that's because the function of the heart is to pump your blood to your lungs and then again to the rest of your body. Um, so the vessels at the top allow it to do that. Inside, if we break the heart open, um, you can see all the different spaces that actually allow the blood to flow through the heart. Uh, there's four different spaces, two atria and two ventricles. So the two atria um, are located at the top of the heart and the two ventricles are located at the bottom. So the word atrium means a large open space and that's what the atrium of the heart is. So when the blood flows back from the body, it's uh, lacking in oxygen, it has a lot of waste carbon dioxide. And uh, it also has other waste products that your body wants to be able to get rid of. And it is dumped through two big, big, big veins. It gets dumped back into the right atrium of the heart, which is a big empty space that you can kind of see here. Um, once the blood is in the right atrium, the top of the heart will contract, it'll kind of beat, and it'll push all of the blood down through a valve into what's called the right ventricle. So this is the right ventricle here. You can always remember which ones are the ventricles because they're kind of shaped like V's. They're these spaces at the bottom near the pointy part of the heart. So the blood flows into the right ventricle through a valve, which prevents the blood from going backwards through the heart. And the valve is held in place by these little chordae tendinae, which literally means heartstrings. So when you hear about a movie tugging at your heartstrings, for example, or a very sad story, that's what they're talking about, these little heartstrings right here. So the blood flows into the right ventricle, and then once again, the bottom of the heart will squeeze or contract, and all the blood will be sent out of the heart. It actually gets sent to the two lungs, which are located on either side of the heart, and that's where all the waste carbon dioxide will be removed from the blood and the oxygen that's very important for your muscles and tissues will be added to the blood. Once that's happened, the blood will come out of the lungs and through another very special set of blood vessels, it'll get transported into what's known as the left atrium. So the left atrium is basically the same as the right atrium, but on the other side of the heart. And now the difference is that the blood has gotten rid of its waste products and it has picked up useful oxygen. Once in the left atrium, the top part of the heart will squeeze again. The blood flows down into what's called the left ventricle. And the left ventricle is just like the right ventricle. Um, like the right side of the heart, the left atrium and the left ventricle are separated by a valve that allows the blood to flow in one direction only. So you can see these amazing little chordae tendinae heart strings that separate the two that make up part of the valve. After the blood has gone into the left side of the heart, the left ventricle, the bottom of the heart will squeeze again and the blood will flow out of the heart and to the rest of the body through an amazing artery, the biggest artery in your body, which is called the aorta. So I'm actually gonna stick my finger right into the aorta of this pig heart right here. It's an incredibly, incredibly muscular blood vessel. Um, and that's because it needs to be able to withstand the pressure of all of that blood rushing out of the heart at once. So the aorta comes up and loops around and there are different uh, arteries that will come off of the aorta that will distribute this oxygenated blood to your whole body. So this one takes blood to your right arm and to the right side of your head and neck and brain. This one goes to the left side of your head, neck and brain. And there would be another one that would take all the blood to your left arm. Then afterwards, the aorta will loop around and descend down behind the heart and that would take blood to the whole lower part of your body. So you can see here how incredibly thick and muscular this aorta is. It's a really very amazing artery. Um, so then once again, the blood will go out to all the different parts of your body. The oxygen will be used up, carbon dioxide will be added to your blood, and eventually the blood will come back and get dumped once again into the right atrium, and the cycle continues. So your blood will flow around your body hundreds of times in a day. It's very amazing. So it's time to make this broken heart whole again and put it away. But before we leave, there's kind of one more question. Why did the ancient Greeks think that your heart was the center of your body, where all of your thoughts came from? Well, it kind of makes sense. When you're really scared or nervous or excited or in love, your heart starts to beat really, really fast. So of course, people who didn't know what the brain was good for would think that that was the center of all of your emotions. But why does it speed up like that? Well, when you're nervous or scared, your body knows that it's going to need a lot of extra energy to respond to that situation. 
Same thing when you're really happy or excited, something unusual is happening that your body is going to need to respond to. Your body is going to need more energy, so your heart is going to have to beat faster to get all of that oxygen and nutrients out into your muscles where they can be very useful. If you're scared or nervous, you're probably going to have to run away from a predator. And if you're in love, you're probably going to have to chase after your valentine.